Item. Item 40, communication request from HUD Collins dated August 30th, 2013 concerning a plan for medical marijuana in the city of San Diego. We do have eight public speakers on this, all in favor, beginning with HUD Collins, followed by Dennis Boisvert, followed by Adela Falk. Yes, uh, good morning again, the council president pro tem. I am asking that this item be put on the docket as soon as possible for a full discussion on medical marijuana. We have been remiss in this council member Emerald, as you know, we're no place on this item. Passed in 1996, Prop 15, again in 2004, but a state uh, uh, and a proposition. We need to have this on the docket immediately. The President of the United States has done a 180 for a third time, stating that he will not prosecute medical marijuana states. We are such. I have mentioned before, California Supreme Court, City of Riverside versus Inland Empire Patients Health. The California Supreme Court has said two important things in May of 2013. Two important things, Council Member Emerald. The first, the federal government and the federal laws against drugs do not preempt state law. Do not preempt state law. And the California Supreme Court has also said that the state legislature has it within their power to preempt the field. In other words, occupy the field of marijuana, which goes and could go much further than Prop 15 and the 2004 MMP. The state legislature could, in fact, occupy the field, meaning... Marijuana, medical marijuana, just like in Colorado, could in fact be legal in this state, in this city, with full regulation and fees slash taxes. It's about time. You're pushing it aside for too long. Yeah, thank you. Dennis Boisvert, followed by Adela Falk, followed by Nathan Arnold. Good morning, Council. Uh, the reason I'm wearing this shirt is I wore it back in 2005 when I was an employee and came here to testify on behalf of medical cannabis. And from that, Assistant Deputy Director saw me at the meeting, and when he left, I thought he was going to cry as he walked by me. Well, it turned out that became a series of discrimination against me and being harassed by my employer, the city of San Diego, over the next five years since I retired. It even culminated in me going to employee's assistants who advised me to sue the city for the way I was being treated. So this has been a loss since 19 since 1996 and has been a law ignored by the legislators for whatever reason. Meanwhile, people are going to jail and the, the thing that I have done now is I became a member of Human Solutions and I'm the court supporter, coordinator. So we sit, I sit in court and I listen to these trials and I've been to 13 of them by now. And it's insane. You'll end up with somebody being convicted with a felony record for the rest of his life and then turning around and getting his MMP card in the probation department, allowing him to grow more marijuana than he was arrested for and got a felony for. And the reason that there is this problem is because the literature, our legislatures, Marty Emerald and Mr. Scott Sherman and Mr. Alvarez, has completely dropped the ball and decide they want to ignore it. They want to ignore the science. Even the smoke cannabis science that came out of the University of San Diego in a study, and they choose to ignore that too. How much longer are we going to have to suffer the patients while the city ignores this issue? I recommend that this actually be docketed at some time so that we can be able to deal with it. Thank you. Adela Falk, followed by Nathan Arnold, followed by Vivian McArdle, and Adela Falk has time seated by Deborah Little for a total of four minutes. Hi, I'm Adela Falk. Uh, most of you know me. I'll stop if y'all have something to do. I took three minutes of my time to come down here and speak, so I would appreciate your attention, Marty Emerald. Marty Emerald? Okay, so while Todd Gloria is using neighborhood code compliance to raid medical marijuana patients, in the city of San Diego, Bonnie Dumanis is still raiding cannabis patients. Mr. Little and Deborah Little are going to court next month for 24 medical marijuana plants in their backyard. They were raided with guns in their face. 
Do these look like criminals to you? The reason that people are being raided is because we have no regulations, because you all are refusing to do your job. All you have to do is dock at this item today. A 23-year-old kid named Robert Orlowski, Scott Sherman, was found guilty for cultivating 10 cannabis plants in his backyard. Then he was found and being put on three years probation, and then he's allowed to go down to the medical marijuana ID place that right here and get his ID card. And if he follows this law, he can now cultivate 24 cannabis plants legally, but was found guilty for growing 10 and illegal for possession. So now he can possess it, he can use it, and he can grow legally. So is this what we want our, our tax paying money to, to go towards? Because you all are not giving us regulations. Obviously, the people didn't like the other ordinance, the LUH ordinance, and they got a referendum. I didn't agree with it because I appreciated all the hard work that went into it. Yes, it was restrictive, but it did give us a zone and it gave us a spot to be. And I appreciated that, and I fought against that referendum. But the people did speak, and now a new, regula or a new ordinance was proposed that was even more stricter than the one that we worked so hard to pass. And you had how many people out here speaking and telling you all they wanted safer access? They didn't want harsher regulations. So can we just go back to the other ordinance? Can we just put that one up back on the docket and vote for it? I mean, David Alvarez, you were for it. Marty Emeralds, you were for it. Sherry Leitner, you were for it. Kevin Faulkner, you were for it. I, I, Lori Zaff was for it. We all agreed with that ordinance. We need something on the Muni Code. Do you all realize that we have a medical marijuana ordinance on the Muni Code? currently that allows us hours of operations, colors for our signs, but then in that, or, in that ordinance it says that we have to go and get this tax certificate, Marty Emerald, that we can't get because a zone doesn't exist. Is this boring to you all? Because this is extremely important to me. No, I'm just trying to get the latest information so that I can uh, offer information. Shouldn't have had this because it was already on the docket? Shouldn't have you already had this information? I mean, 17 years, 17 years ago, and San Diego is what, the only city that doesn't have an ordinance and can't come together and get an ordinance? And it's really hard to sit here and watch people speak and have you all reading. Or you did this, you looked at him when this gentleman was speaking, and you went, and you went, and then David Alvarez laughed like it's a joke. We voted for you because we thought you represented us. And we want you to give us the respect that, we, that you expect us to give you when we see you want us to be courteous. We want the same from you. We are not criminals. We are patients. Does this look like a criminal to you? 24 medical marijuana plants. She's going to be a felon. She can go to jail for this. Is this what you all had in mind? Stop Bonnie Dumanis from raiding legitimate medical marijuana patients, give us regulations, give us an ordinance so that we can come into compliance. Please, I am begging you like I begged you years ago when Donna Fry put it on the docket for me, please docket it today. Please don't file it in this little magical file that nobody knows what it is. We care about this and we hope you all do too. Nathan Arnold, followed by Vivian Thank McCardle, you, followed by Mara Felsen, followed by Cassandra Perando. Hi, uh, thank you for your time. Good morning, uh, Council. Uh, thank you, HUD Collins, for uh, unfalteringly pursuing several uh, major topics, including medical marijuana in San Diego. Um, last time you had a discussion, you said that you saw no necessary for no need for testimony regarding efficacy as medicine, and I thank you for that. Uh, th this kind of works uh, directly into the argument that I hear for people who are against medical marijuana saying that they can get as much as they want anytime they want and I believe it should actually be said that they get as much as they need whenever they need it and uh, sensible and reasonable and safe policy uh, regarding medical marijuana can be uh, found in your old ordinances if you make a few changes uh, reducing the uh, facilities of sensitive uses from uh, whatever amount, 600 feet or 1,000 you were considering, reduce it to 400 feet. Uh, considering removing some of the uh, sensitive uses. Uh, 
Let's see. And as far as the federal statements are concerned, a few weeks ago, Holder did make a statement regarding that they would pursue uh, violent, criminal, violent criminals, traffickers, and people uh, involved in uh, larger networks, networks of crime. And this should not include any uh, law-abiding organization or affiliation or collective in uh, California. Uh, Jerry Brown has also moved uh, the hemp thing along further. So I asked how slippery is the slope for medical marijuana? Vivian McArdle, followed by Mara Felsen, followed by Cassandra Peranto, followed by Stephen Greenwald. Um, good morning, City uh, Council. I just want to thank you for listening to um, everybody here today uh, concerning medical cannabis. Um, I live in Ocean Beach. Um, I do believe San Diego is the finest city, or I would have moved away a long time ago. Um, and thank you, Kevin. I really enjoy Ocean Beach. It's a beautiful community to live in. And I really hope that you consider putting this on the docket for an ordinance this year, not filing it, not kicking the can further down the road. Um, I'm a voter. I love voting. I love being a part of this community. Um, and I feel that the voters have been ignored. I don't think that you're representing the spirit in which they came together and, you know, put an ordinance that was placed in front of you and voted upon. Um, it's just that if you wait another four months, it'll get kicked down the road again another four months. And again, it just seems to be the topic that gets, you know, kicked down the road. And I think that there's a lot of benefits um, for the city. And, and in light of a lot of things that are happening in the news, if you don't have an ordinance in place, then you have anarchy. You know, you have people doing things they shouldn't. And there, uh, I just think that you need an ordinance so it can be done properly and that, you know, public safety is considered and also women's health. If you look at a lot of the medical cannabis people behind me, most of them are women. The benefits for women's anxiety and um, insomnia and a, and a whole list of things, um, are, it's, it's a, a true benefit. And I just want to close out, I would never have come up here and spoke if I didn't feel this passionate about this topic. Um, I'm actually quite shaken and, and I'm shaking because it's kind of, I'm scared. I mean, look what's happening to the littles. I mean, that could happen to anybody. So um, please take that into consideration for the docket this year. Don't kick that can further down the road. Thank you. Thank you, Mara Felsen, followed by Cassandra Perando, followed by Stephen Greenwald, followed by Sandra Lewis. Good morning, uh, Council President Leitner and ladies and gentlemen of the Council. My name is Mara Felsen and I am a resident and homeowner in District 6. Uh, it's regrettable that Ms. Zapp isn't here, uh, uh, not only as my, uh, my representative, um, I perceive her as one of the less enthusiastic members of the Council when it comes to taking up this issue. Um, the thing that has changed since the last time this issue was before the Council is the most recent position that the federal government has taken regarding marijuana. And what's really critical here is that the, the memo that came out a few weeks ago did not only concern medical marijuana. We are moving past that point. We are at the point where now the federal government is saying we're not going to interfere in the distribution of recreational marijuana. So, uh, but the most important thing that I took from that memorandum was that the federal government is not going to interfere when there are robust regulations that uh, go that allow for the orderly distribution of cannabis and. The thing that we are all here for today, uh, all the people that are speaking here in favor of item number 40, asking you to please docket that item, is so that we could please address the issue of regulations. I'm sure that this council and all of the residents of San Diego do not want to encourage federal interference, but if we do not regulate this issue, uh, that's exactly what we're inviting. And it's not that these, this is, this is not an issue 
issue that's going to go away, and these transactions will continue to occur. They're occurring everywhere. They're occurring in your neighborhoods. They're occurring in homes. People desperately want to go to, uh, to regulated businesses and purchase their medicine in a regulated fashion, and, and, and business owners desperately want to pay taxes to this city. So um, it's in everybody's best interest to please docket this item. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cassandra Perando, followed by Stephen Greenwald, followed by Sandra Lewis. Good morning, Council. Um, my name is Cassandra Perando. I came today to ask for all of you to docket this issue, as it's important for a lot of people. Um, I'm a, a military veteran. I served seven years in the United States military, and I did two tours. Um, I was exposed to radiation and solvents and chemicals, which left me with an array of health issues. Um, I occasionally find relief in medical marijuana, as many people that I serve with do. And what people want is laws and ordinances that make it very clear what people should and should not be doing. I sent an email to every member of council here, including the city attorney, and I did not, it was two weeks ago, I did not receive a response from anyone. I received an automatic response from Councilmember Cole, which I appreciated. Um, but I sent the email two weeks ago, and in the email I shared some of the personal problems that I'm having due to the lack of ordinance on this issue, but also that people that I served with and people that I know that are terminally ill, the problems that they're having with the lack of this council's response to this issue, I didn't receive a response via email, and it left me feeling very disenchanted because I feel like if local government can't respond to a disabled combat veteran within two weeks, there's not a lot of hope for a lot of things around here. So what I'm asking today is that this, docket be, this issue be docketed so that the people can get an ordinance that they deserve because this, this medicine provides relief to people. It improves the quality of their life, and that's important. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen Greenwald, followed by Sandra Lewis. Good morning again. This is a, a topic that's on many different levels. There are those who oppose marijuana. Specifically, I was reading that Doug Manchester, he wants to do hair samples in high school students to check out if they've ever had marijuana in the previous month. There's another gentleman who makes the um, drones and he's also against marijuana. But let me tell you a story about what happened when I went to the new library opening here on Sunday. There was a lady in front of me with a wheelchair, and I asked her, why are you in a wheelchair? And she said, I just had ovarian cancer surgery. And so I talked with her, and I said, you know, what you could do, which is a very devastating disease. Um, also, there's a gentleman named Lauren Nancaro, who is a, uh, a weather forecaster here, and he has a malignant cancer in his brain, and he's had a second surgery already, and I've done those type of operations as well. I assisted on them, and they're terrible. And the third one is a, a gentleman who I spoke to with prostatic cancer that's metastasized to his skeleton. And these people really, if they can use marijuana, and they feel better, the quality of life takes away their pain, and perhaps even in the future, we're gonna find out that the anti-inflammatory CBD can actually treat the cancer and maybe reverse it. Why can't they have safe access? That's the problem. Why should they go to a gang member? I'm totally against financing gangs. I'm totally against the Mexican cartels that I feel that are merciless butchers. So my point is, we have to have safe access. In the next year or so, California is going to have legalized marijuana. And I've said before here two years ago that we should sell it like spinach to the grocery store. So I've done a lot of studies, and I can tell you all the scientific work just like that. But my point is, these people with terrible cancers that we don't have an answer for in medicine, we should allow them safe access. Thank you. Sandra Lewis. Hello, I've been coming to these meetings for over four years. I've watched all of you look at us scornfully, talk about us, and treat us as if we are the scum of the earth. I'm a homeowner in the city of San Diego. My son is a medical marijuana patient. I'm a medical marijuana patient. Both of my parents are medical marijuana patients. My son has a brain tumor and epilepsy. Since he became a patient, he's had one seizure. Before that, he had many. 
his brain tumor has not grown. He's forced to go to the black market to support the cartels, support the drug dealers. He was an aerospace engineering student when he got ill. He's now going out and getting marijuana on the streets. We've tried, tried so hard to work with you. And we've come, we ask you to please look at us as people. We're not criminals, we're not bad. We're people just like you. We have people we love that are sick. We need this. Please, please just take a minute out of your time. Think about how important it is to us. Stop looking at us so scornfully and put this on the docket. Give us some ordinance so we can do this legally and stop supporting the cartels. Thank you. In addition, there were four speakers that were in favor of the same that did not wish to speak. Brandy Trota, Melissa Behrens, Dennis Little, and Donald Way. And that concludes the public speakers on this item. Councilmember Elmerald. Thank you very much. And uh, I think that uh, many of us up here on the dais uh, share the frustration that's been expressed here. A couple of years ago, we, we did have a medical marijuana task force. We approved uh, two ordinances to uh, uh, regulate operations of medical marijuana facilities and also uh, some zoning, some land use. Uh, and um, the, uh, unfortunately, uh, people in the medical marijuana community uh, didn't like that. They felt we were limiting uh, their opportunity to open storefronts and, I guess, make money. Uh, and it's left us where we are today. But earlier this year, uh, we did uh, bring forward this issue and we asked staff, uh, the mayor's office and staff, to please uh, revisit our land use ordinance. And um, unfortunately, uh, we haven't heard back from the former mayor, but uh, there is some action, I understand, on that front. Lene Lewis is here from the mayor's office and you've got an update for us? Yes. Yes, I do. It's my understanding that a new ordinance will head to the Community Planners Committee soon, and it's expected to go to council in January. Excellent. So, uh, and the Community Planners Committee, for those who aren't familiar with that group, uh, who are they? Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that question, Marty, but I will be happy to uh, get that information and get it back to you. Well, the, the individuals, I, I'm not a, a asking for names, but they are the uh, presidents of the community planning groups from throughout the city of San Diego. They have heard this, they've seen the ordinance before when it was originally circulated a couple of years back. And so uh, I personally look forward to seeing it back here at council in January. And I do hope we can get the votes we need uh, to allow uh, storefronts to reopen in areas that, uh, that were chosen for a reason, to help balance the needs of neighborhoods and the patients who rely on this medicine. Nobody here wants anybody to have to go out on the streets to buy marijuana. Uh, that just, that doesn't make any sense. It's not humane, it's not dignified or respectful. And, uh, and it's not legal. So uh, we do need to have an ordinance, I, I believe, to, to uh, let people know what the expectations are and allow patients uh, who need this medicine to have access to it. So thank you very much. And again, look forward to seeing this back at council in January. So Ms. Emerald, with that clarification, would you be interested in making a motion to file the item? Yes, uh, I would move that we file this item uh, for uh, consideration as soon as it's been Is there a uh, second to that motion? Second by Councilmember Cole. We have a motion by Ms. Emerald, second by Councilmember Cole to file this item given the status report from the mayor's office. Please vote. Please call the roll. That motion carries unanimously with Council President Gloria, Council Members Kersey and Zaff absent. Our final communication.